creature which James Cape and Adams called the monarch of American beasts, the grizzly bear. Since 1968, Doug Peacock has spent much of his life photographing, filming, and studying the grizzly in an effort to ensure the animal's continued wild survival. I don't know if you want to call it fear or, or reverence or what, but that spooky feeling, which is a mixture of, of respect, awe, fear, it's a healthy thing. And uh, that's something that I'm after. I, I, I want that experience. In 1800, there were over 200,000 grizzlies in North America. Now, outside of Alaska, Doug believes there are probably fewer than 500 left. All but a handful of those live here in Yellowstone, Glacier National Park, and adjacent forests. The places where Doug records and studies this wildest and most majestic of American animals. Today, Doug takes bodybuilding champion and movie actor Arnold Schwarzenegger on a camping trip into the park to look for grizzlies. Well, authorities, Andy Russell, who probably knows as much of wild grizzlies as anybody else, believes the grizzly bears can tell what you mean when you go into grizzly bear country. If you go armed with a camera, that's one thing. The Park Service does not allow guns to be carried into Yellowstone, not even into the high timber and mountain meadows that are the grizzly's natural habitat, the manless places where he is still as dominant as he was 10,000 years ago. This is probably a grizzly kill, although you can never be sure. How do you tell? Well, see how the neck is twisted back here? And one horn is broken off, and it's probably killed in March. That's too early for the horns to fall off by themselves. Grizzlies often run down elk, jump up on their back, and just shake the neck and break it. They just attack the animal? Uh, usually what just... happens is they'll start loping behind the herd and single out a single animal, and then put on a burst of speed. And a grizzly bear can, uh, a bloody grizzly bear can outrun it. A quarter horse in a short distance. Here. Oh, come on, another quarter horse. Oh, uh, yeah, they could uh, they could probably out-pump you, Arnold. <laughs> and, uh, out-pump me, yeah. yeah. It smells. Let's get yeah, out of here. That uh, perfumed uh, grizzly bear. This part of the valley is probably the best place left in all Yellowstone for grizzly bears. And every time you come up to rise, you should approach to rise very slowly because you never know what's going to be just over the lip of the, of the ridge. Once I almost walked up on about an 800-pound boar on a creek. He was 30 feet away, and all I saw was hair sticking up. OK, not too much noise now. Is that really? Yeah, it's Pelican Creek. Bear tracks. A what? In the snow over there. See those tracks? Take a look. Those are grizzly bear tracks. No other animal leaves a pattern like that. How about a human being? You're right. Human beings are close, but that's no human being. Not out here. There's nothing out here but us and grizz, apparently. The little ones in the town. Let's go down there and have a look. Say, we'd probably walk up in that track very cautiously because I can't tell how fresh it is from a distance. I mean, right. it, it's, it's, I get sort of spooky when I see it. Relatively fresh tracks. Easy now. Wow. Can you believe the size? I think they're about... Look at this if you compare it to my hand. That's awesome. It's huge. It's a sow. And probably a yearling from the size, I'd say. Yeah, it's... Uh, and probably it's only two hours old. But it's enormous. I mean, look at those things, huh? You bet. Do you realize that uh, this one animal makes that much different? If the grizzly bear weren't here, this place would be just like Santa Monica. That's why I like grizzly bears, is that the presence of this one animal colors the entire complexion of a place. 
but it's getting a little spooky. I think I'd like to call it quits for today. It's getting too late, and that bear's headed for thick woods, and we don't want to follow him in there. Okay. For now, let's beat it. Encouraged by the grizzly sign they've seen, Doug and Arnold call it a day and go set up camp for the night. 